In this video, we're taking a further look at the solo by Ramsey Lewis in the tune In Crowd. Again, I transcribed it from the original recording, which I, is not that easy to do because of all the background noise. And if you've ever heard the In Crowd by Ramsey Lewis recording, there's a lot of stuff going on in that nightclub. But we finished off the solo here, and we are going to continue on discussing all of these different riffs and licks that Ramsey Lewis plays, which is really gonna help your playing. First thing I'm gonna do is play the transcription for you so you get an idea of what the solo sounds like, and then we're gonna come right back and dive in and finish off the solo. Okay, so that's the transcription I did. A little bit later, I'm gonna put a link to the sheet music and the backing track for this solo, the entire transcription, so you can download it and learn it. And again, it's really gonna help your playing. So we finished off here where we have those lines. And we take a little bit of a different tone here. So in the previous few bars, we there was a lot of rhythm and syncopation, but now we're gonna add some more notes to that rhythm and syncopation. And it seems like in this section, there is a lot of notes happening, but it's really not that difficult. So let's go from this bar here, which is the fourth bar of the top line. So let's start here. Okay, so I didn't play that perfectly, but I think that's okay. We'll get to it. One of the things you have to recognize here is you've got the F natural as the grace notes heading into those. And because you're playing the bottom note with your thumb, you have to catch that with your second finger and third finger like this. That one's a little difficult because you've got to stretch. There's stretching of the fingers going on here. And there is a little change up here where you've got these three eighth notes here. And of course, this lick is a little bit difficult to write. I've written it as six, 16th notes, but it really is more like 
triplet patterns, whatever, but you have to feel it. So use your first finger, second finger, and third finger. So the next line is a little bit tricky, this one here. Took me a few passes at that one myself, even after I transcribed it. Because you have a couple of different grace notes. You have first the G sharp, and then you have the S, F sharp. So I would slide the third finger off on the F sharp and the G sharp. Okay, and then when we continue on, we're getting more blues scale oriented here. Now, I'm not just using the G sharp as a, as a grace note, I'm also using a G natural, like this. I think it's better to do that, it's like one, two, and three fingers. That's a neat one, this one right here. You know, it's interesting, they're all very similar, these licks. They're all based on that D blues scale. Okay, neat. All right, the really interesting thing about this next section that starts here and continues even past where the screenshot is, is instead of doing call in the right hand, answer in the left hand, he's doing call in the right hand and answer in the right and left hand. So you have to kind of play both. So the right hand is bouncing back and forth between the call and the answer. And again, these are really just the same licks, they just have a different ending. Okay? That one jumps a bit. This one, which goes right up to the grace note on F and then the D triad, or the basically the third and the fifth of the triad. That one jumps quite a bit. You gotta jump your hand quickly. Then it's getting into the bridge. Okay, so that's really the only thing to pay attention there is the fact that you're doing the call and the answer together with the right hand and the left hand is just doing the answers. Okay, kind of cool section. And then it jumps into the bridge and he does solo a little bit on the bridge at the beginning for the first four bars and then he just sticks to the melody for the last four bars. So it's uh, the F7, or F sharp seven chord. And I wasn't too sure of, of whether he actually played this or not, it was really hard to hear in the recording, but I think it's close enough. I do put the F kind of as the, the note that continues, or the F sharp. So you kind of have to play those notes together. If you want to just play the top note, then that's okay, but I think it sounds better with the F sharp. And then this lick, which is really challenging, it's more challenging to write than it is to play. So it's kind of like this. So kind of slide those notes. So again, if you can't really read that properly, which I don't think it's written quite perfectly, 
It's more of a feel thing. Just listen to this when I play it. And that's pretty much all there is to that solo. If you have any questions about the different licks and you want to understand what's actually going on a little bit more, just point one out and I'll maybe give you some pointers on the fingerings to use for it and feel. Because again, that last one, it's really a totally a feel thing. So listen to it a few times and then try to pick it up when you download the recording. So let me uh, give you a link to the sheet music and the backing track that you can download and practice because the whole solo is there. I've written it out for you. As far as I know, I haven't ever seen anybody write this out. It may exist somewhere, but I've never found it. So I did it myself and I hope you enjoy learning it because it's really going to help you with your jazz and blues piano playing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And when you do subscribe, hit the little bell because you get notified of the new upcoming videos and we're posting videos like this all the time. So again, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in another video. Take care.